here is a uh, deconstructed 200 megahertz uh, Oxford Benamar uh, magnet. Um, the outer can, as you can see, is made out of stainless steel. This inner can goes in between, and uh, in normal circumstances, there will be layers and layers of, of metallicized mylar to provide super insulation uh, to keep things cold. Much, and much of that's come from the space industry. Uh, this is then inserted in there. This can holds the magnet, and in the space where this can is, is located, uh, it's filled with liquid nitrogen. Inside of this can, uh, this can is filled with uh, liquid helium, much lower temperature, and there is an outer shield for, for the magnet here, which is inserted in there, and inside this shield, we have our, our magnet that is wound with miles and miles of, of superconducting wire. So at, at liquid helium temperatures, this wire has virtually no resistance. So when you bring a magnet to field, you have an AC, a DC power supply that can slowly bleed current into these coils. And once you get to the correct value for the current carrying and capability of those coils, you disconnect. And in theory, as long as you keep the magnet filled with liquid helium, uh, the magnet will exist basically forever or until until we run into a helium shortage at some point. Uh, so what we, these connections here are to energize the magnet. Because there's so much current in these magnets, in case you run out of helium and the warm, coil warms up, you can possibly burn it. So to prevent that, we have these large resistance network here that takes all the energy from that high current so that we don't burn the superconducting wire. Over here we have a series of burners from the very, one of the earlier NMR magnets, and that's what's called a uh, shim control system. So what we want to do for, for an NMR magnet is have a very homogeneous magnetic field. And to do that, we need to correct those raw currents in the magnet in three different directions. So we have a number of correction current coils uh, that go inside the inner core of the magnet give us a very homogeneous field so that we can do high resolution NMR. Because we want to look at lines that are very narrow and a normal superconducting magnet by itself will only give you a homogeneity of about 100 hertz to 200 hertz wide. So you'd have a very wide line and you wouldn't be able to do high resolution NMR where you want to look at proton coupling constants which are on the 